All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today, we're continuing concepts and principles with positive and negative punishment. Like we did for reinforcement before, punishment is a key principle of behavior. With reinforcement increasing behavior, that would mean punishment decreases behavior. So just like what we talked about in the last video, whenever we're thinking about behavior change, we're thinking about consequences we're looking at how the consequence changes behavior in the future. If that behavior increases, we're thinking reinforcement. If it's decreasing, we're now thinking punishment and extinction. So in this video, we're going to boil down punishment to the essential, simple ideas we think you need to pass your exam and become a great behavior analyst. As always, please subscribe if you aren't already. We have three BCBA videos a week, plus our RBT content. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, please let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. Let's start here. Friend, what is punishment? Punishment is a principle of behavior used to de decrease behavior in the future. The key word is decrease. When we have an ABC contingency and we're thinking about what is our consequence, well, we need to look at behavior and what it's doing in the future. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Punishment will always decrease behavior. If that behavior is increasing, it's never going to be punishment. So don't just look at the topography of the consequence. You've got to think about how is the consequence actually changing behavior. Positive and negative punishment decrease behavior. And remember, positive means we're adding something. Negative, we're removing something. So the positive and negative refer to the addition or removal of a stimulus as a consequence following a behavior response. Finally, punishment will always reduce behavior or else it is not punishment. And you're going to find as you watch my videos, we repeat the same ideas over and over again because you want to be consistent in how you're thinking about these different ideas, the different terminology. If you're consistent, it's going to make you better at the exam and it's going to make you better in practice. Let's start with positive punishment. Positive punishment occurs when a behavior is followed by the presentation, so the addition of an aversive stimulus, decreasing the likelihood that the behavior will occur again. Now, when we say an aversive stimulus, we're speaking in broad, generalized terms, right? Often, if it's going to be a punisher, the stimulus will be unpleasant or aversive. But remember, we're not thinking about topography as much as we are how it's changing the behavior. If praise often functions as a reinforcer for a student of mine, but in some situation, I praise the student for answering a question correctly, and they stop answering questions in class, that praise has now become a punisher. So you have to think about not necessarily is it unpleasant, is it aversive? What does it look like? But how is it changing the behavior? And if it's positive, it's going to be added. The consequence causes that behavior to occur less in the future. It's as simple as that, right? Now, we have extinction as well, but with punishment, something is added or taken away, and it's going to cause the behavior to always occur less in the future. It's important to deliver the punishment consequence immediately, just like reinforcement. We're focused on contiguity, so the closeness between the behavior and the consequence, we want them to become as close as possible because we don't want to inadvertently punish something that we're not meaning to punish. So a student makes an inappropriate joke and is scolded. The student no longer makes the joke. Well, the student makes the joke. The behavior, scolding is the consequence. What happens to the joking behavior? It decreases. Pretty clear, positive punishment. Negative punishment, essentially the same thing, except the consequence is now removed. So negative punishment occurs when a behavior results in the loss or removal of a desirable stimulus, leading to a reduction in the behavior's occurrence. Just like with positive punishment, yes, often with negative punishment, the stimulus that is being removed is desired or wanted, but it doesn't necessarily mean it always has to be desired or wanted. All we're looking at is the consequence and the consequences impact on behavior in the future. That's how we're going to decide, is my consequence reinforcing or is it punishing? 
And remember, negative just means removed. So the consequence causes that behavior to occur less in the future. We're going to keep saying that over and over to ourselves. Punishment causes behavior to occur less in the future. Two examples of negative punishment include response cost, where an earned reinforcer is removed contingent on behavior, and timeout. We have several types of timeout, right? Timeout from reinforcement, exclusionary timeout, partition timeout. The timeout is typically considered a negative punisher. With negative punishment, we are removing something following behavior that is decreasing the future instances of that behavior. So a client swipes materials off the table, you take a token away. Behavior is swiping materials. The consequence is a response cost or removal of a token, so negative. And then the client does not swipe. Behavior has decreased negative punishment. So some key differences, while both positive and negative punishment decrease behavior, they differ in whether an aversive is introduced or a desired stimulus is taken away. And again, we're speaking generally here, but in many, 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 many situations, right, the aversive is going to be introduced in positive punishment, or we're going to take away something desired with negative. So positive punishment, consequence is addition of stimulus, reducing behavior. Negative punishment is consequence of removal of consequence, reducing behavior. Both decrease future behavior. Other notes, because punishment is a very serious thing, especially when we think ethics. Punishment should always be used in conjunction with reinforcement to teach a replacement. If we think of it as the fair pair rule, if you're going to remove a behavior, you want to add a functionally equivalent behavior. Whatever behavior you're removing is meeting some sort of function. So it isn't fair to take away somebody's ability to meet a need or a want and then not give them another way to do it. So if we're removing a behavior, we typically need to add something functionally equivalent. Obviously, there's always exceptions to every rule, but in general, you want to add something, add, add a behavior if you're going to take something away. You don't typically use punishment on its own unless it's a very serious matter, self-injury, something like that. You should choose the highest acceptable magnitude of punishment from the start. Don't fade in punishment. We want, to, we want to get rid of punishment as quickly as possible, the use of punishment. So we want to use the highest magnitude punisher we can from the very start. That way, our goal is to get rid of punishment as quickly as possible. And you want to fade it as soon as possible, which means you need to closely monitor that punishment as much as possible. You've got to think about the ethics behind punishment and using aversives. And then beware of punishment-induced aggression and emotional responses. Children who may not typically be aggressive, if punished, can sometimes engage in these aggressive responses or emotional responses. You also have to be concerned with pairing yourself or RBTs pairing themselves with punishment. We don't want to associate ourselves with punishment too often because then we ourselves become aversive. So with punishment... You've got to plan carefully. You've got to monitor closely and consistently. And then you want to fade out as quickly as possible. All right. Thanks for watching. That was positive and negative punishment. Be sure to check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please subscribe if you aren't already. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.